Welcome, folks. I'd like to talk about subrings. The point being that, that rings are another algebraic object, just like groups and fields. And there's lots of theorems and properties and structures that you can study about rings. Um, you can study subrings. You can study quotients of rings. Um, you can study cancellation properties in rings. Um, and, and we won't go in as much detail with rings as we did with groups. But let's talk about subrings for a little bit. So let R be some ring and consider a subset S of its elements. S is a subring if S is, is itself a ring under the same operations, addition and multiplication, as we had in the, in the larger ring R. Okay. So in particular, if you take two elements in S and you multiply them, the product better be in S. If you take two elements in S and add them, the sum better be in S. The multiplicative inverse, or sorry, there might not be multiplicative inverses, but the additive inverse of an element in S had better be in S. The additive identity had better be in S, etc. Okay. The complex numbers, think of this as our ring R. It's a, it's a pretty large ring, <laughs> I don't know, by some, uh, some notions of large. Below the complex numbers, I've drawn various subrings. Okay. So all of these are subrings of the complex numbers. You can see I'm using this definition of ring where we don't need multiplicative identities. So none of these rings have a multiplicative identity. So I'm, I'm using that definition where a ring need not have a multiplicative identity. Um, and whenever there's sort of a line going up from one subring to another, you know, that means not only is 8z a subring of 4z, but 8z is also a subring of z. Okay. So let me talk about um, the sort of lattice of subrings. This is by far not complete. You could draw in many, many other subrings that are not, not in this picture. Okay. Um, we have the complex numbers. The complex numbers with zero imaginary part form the reals. And then I could restrict attention to the rationals, things of the form A over B, where A and B are integers. These are all fields, but beneath them I get Z, which is a, a subring that's not a field, right? Don't necessarily have multiplicative inverses. Z adjoin I is called the Gaussian integers. It's a set of all things of the form A plus B I, where if I said A and B were real numbers, this would just be the complexes, complex numbers. But I'm gonna specify furthermore, A and B have to be integers, okay? So now I don't um, necessarily have multiplicative inverses anymore, right? Two plus three I, has no multiplicative inverse. There's nothing you can multiply two plus three i by in the Gaussian integers to get, to get one, okay? But in the complex numbers, which are a field, two plus three i does have a multiplicative inverse. It's just one over two plus three i, which is a complex number. All right. I think I, um, you know, this inclusion here is not wrong, but I think I actually meant to draw this inclusion here from the rationals going up to this ring that contains the rationals. So Q, this is how you say this ring in English is Q adjoin the square root of two. Let me write that down. It's equal to all things of the form a plus b times the square root of two, such that a and b are rationals. All right, so 
you maybe are starting to get the pattern of this adjoined notation. Z adjoined I, I just looked at all things of the form A plus BI, where A and B were in Z. And then Q adjoined the square root of two, that was all things of the form A plus B times the square root of two, where A and B were, were rationals. You know, so it's sort of like this letter is going here and this symbol, this symbol is going here. All right, and probably this edge, I think I, I wanna draw here instead. So the rationals fit inside the rationals that join the square root of two, right? Because I could just take B to be zero and then the rationals live inside here. And everything of this form, A plus B times the square root of two is a real number, okay? But, but not every real number is a rational plus a rational times the square root of two, right? So this is a ring that, that sits in between these two rings. Indeed, um, this is actually a field. This is a field that sits in between these two fields. So, um, you know, the square root of three, for example, is a real number that's in the reals, but not in this subring. Okay. And, and there's many other different rings I could put here. I could put Q adjoined the square root of 17. All right. So now let's look at this ring, the integers. I don't require my rings to have a multiplicative identity right now. So this has various subrings. 2z, 3z, 5z, 7z. Um, sort of on this level, I've put prime numbers. Okay. Down on this level, I've put products of two prime numbers, like um, two times five is 10, two times two is four, three times two is six, three times three is nine. And you'll, you'll notice that 6z is a subring of 3z, and 6z is also a subring of 2z. So, you know, 2z had all its numbers divisible by 2. So things like negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, etc. 3z had all elements divisible by 6. Sorry, divisible by 3. So negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6. 6z has all numbers divisible by 6. So negative 12, negative 6, 0, 6, 12. Okay, and so you can see that 6z is a ring contained both inside 3z and 2z. So that's why I have these, arrows, these inclusions. And 2z and 3z are, are rings contained inside the integers. All right, and then on this level, I've put rings uh, coming from a product of three primes. So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3, 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. And, you know, I've not listed all of the primes here, nor have, have I listed all products of two primes, nor have I listed all products of three primes. But you can imagine this sort of lattice of subrings descending below. So we drew some of these pictures for groups just briefly. We started with a large group. At the bottom, we put the trivial group only containing the identity. And then we drew its various subgroups and which of those subgroups were contained in the others. And you can do the same uh, type of thing for rings. If you want to study a complicated ring, like the integers, a good way to do it is to study various subrings. Public questions so far? I'll finish um, this video by giving one more example of a subring. So let M2R denote the ring of all two by two matrices. So here's you know, a formula for all two by two matrices with entries that are real numbers. One subring is the diagonal matrices, okay? 
Here's my diagonal matrices. To be a subring, that implies that when you take two elements in this subring and add them, you get another element in the subring. Okay, so if I take two diagonal matrices and add them, I get another diagonal matrix. Or if I take two diagonal matrices and multiply them, I get another diagonal matrix. So when I multiply here, I just get A times X. When I multiply here, I get zero plus zero. When I multiply here, I get zero plus zero, right? Because I have A times zero plus zero times Y. And when I multiply here, I get D times Y. Um, you know, and, and then, uh, so, so these are just some ingredients towards showing that the diagonal matrices form a subring in the ring of all two by two matrices. Now, M2R is not a commutative ring. Okay. All rings are commutative under addition, but not all rings are commutative under multiplication. And that's what we mean by commutative ring, one that's commutative under multiplication. And it's not the case that two by two matrices commute. You know, you might have A times B is not equal to B times A if A and B are matrices. The subring, however, here. of diagonal matrices is commutative. And, you know, I could demonstrate that quite quickly. Um, let's take two arbitrary diagonal matrices. Okay, if I multiply them as I saw above, I get this diagonal matrix. Now, A and X and D or Y are just real numbers. So this is the same as, um, this is the same as X times A, zero, zero, Y times D, just because real numbers commute. And this, if you work it out, is the product of these two matrices. So, what we have here is just an example of a ring that is not commutative. Not all two by two matrices commute under multiplication, but here's a subring of diagonal matrices, which is commutative. All right. So, rings have many properties just like fields and groups that we see and study in, in algebraic structures. Uh, sub objects are always very important in mathematics. Sub rings of rings are quite important. And this is just a, a quick introduction to sub rings of various rings. Any public questions? Thanks so much.